Greetings, church family, friends. Welcome to our youth service. God is good. All the time. God is great. Right on right now. Uh, our youth service, you know, we have games. We also have worship, but importantly, the word. So if you're in tune in right now, feel free to get up. Worship with us tonight. Because, you know, the Lord is good. So join us to see along.
Lord, we honor you today in our points and service, and we invite you in to touch anybody who's listening, anybody who hears this ministry, Lord. Touch their hearts and touch their minds, Lord. Please open up our hearts and minds to receive your word today that was been prepared, Lord. And we just pray for everybody out there, anybody who's sick, anybody who needs healing, anybody who needs a blessing, Lord, rain your blessing upon them and give them your healing hand, Lord. In your name we claim everything, all our victories and everything that we need, Lord, we get it from you. And we praise you and we thank you, Lord, for this day. And we ask you, please bless the end of this service. Bless the word that is coming forth. And please touch our hearts and bless you more watching. We love you and praise you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen. What a powerful time in worship. If you are out there watching tonight, why don't you get some thumbs up or some hearts out there for us? We're so glad that you're worshiping with us tonight. And just like that, we are right into the word tonight. Hallelujah. So our special speaker... Well, good evening, family. Welcome in. My name is Pastor Siai Ngapelu. I am um, the pastor of Great Life 702 in Vegas and Great Life 310 in California. Together, my husband and I, we pastor these two campuses. And I'm so honored to be here tonight. I just want to thank my sister and my cousin Tolu for giving me this opportunity. I also want to thank the pastors and the leaders at Vista Oceanside Assembly of God for entrusting this platform to me um, to bring forth the word of God. You know, I never take it lightly when I get asked to speak the word of God whether it's in person or um, through the internet like this. I mean, I think it is so amazing how the Church of God has just been using all of their resources to get the gospel across. And so young people, those of you teenagers that are watching, I want to applaud you. I want to say great job for just taking time out of your uh uh, Thursday night or Friday night, wherever you are, um, to hear the word of God, because not many young people are willing to do that. But I believe that there is a new generation of young people who are hungry for God, who are getting ready to just take the world for Jesus. And so I'm not going to be long. I'm going to take time to pray. And while I pray, if you are a young person that belongs to Vista Oceanside Assembly of God, I want you to get a pen, get a paper, get something out so that you can take notes and let me pray. Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I thank you for this time that I get to bring forth your word. I pray that it would be a time that you will speak to our hearts. Holy Spirit, use me as your vessel as I get ready to encourage our young people, Lord God. And I just thank you for who you are and what you're doing in our lives. And we give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we all come in agreement and say, amen, amen. Well, thank you again for joining. Tonight, I'm not gonna be long. I'm just going to share with you some things that God has placed on my heart. Um, the topic that I was given to talk about tonight is elevate. So if you need a title for your notes, you just write down elevate because that's what I'm going to be talking about tonight. You know, we are living in a very interesting time in our nation, in our world. There are so many changes going on around us, so many things that are happening, um, not only in our world, but in our nation alone. And you know, if you are a teenager or you are a young person in the year 2020, I want to take my hat off to you. I want to honor you tonight because you have, you are living in such an interesting time. You know, we're doing this social learning thing where now your classes are not in person. They are on a screen. Your teacher, you can't physically talk to her or him, but now you have to email them or, or talk to them all over your Google Chromebook or whatever it may be. And man, although it may seem like a very confusing time, although it may seem like a chaotic time, but can I encourage you young people, that does not, I repeat, it does not change God's plans for you. The world may change around us, the way that you do school, it may change, the way that you turn in your homework, it may change, but that does not change the plan of God for your life. There is still a plan. There is still a purpose. You can still do great things. You can still go higher. You can still elevate in your walk with God as long as you stay close to him. You know, we live in a time in our world where so many young people prefer 
comfort over purpose. We live in a world where consumerism is the new norm. What is that? That's when we just consume whatever it is that is given to us, whether it's through social media, through our friends, through the news, through our parents, through our teachers. We live in a consumerism age right now. We also live in a time where there are so many people who are more skeptical to the message of Jesus than they are receiving it. But I declare that that time is going to change. Now, young people, I want you to listen up because like I said, I'm not going to take long. I'm just going to say what God has placed upon my heart and then we're going to go. So the theme that I've been given to speak about tonight is called Elevate. Everybody say Elevate. Come on, if you're a girl and wherever you are in your house, I want you to say it loud. Say Elevate. If you're a young man, I want you to shout Elevate. Now, what I'm going to do tonight um, is I'm going to give you different points and different ways that you can elevate or go higher in your walk with the Lord, but it's going to be in an acronym form. So what that means is I'm going to take every letter in the word elevate, and I'm going to give you a point that starts with that letter. So here we go. Point number one comes from the letter E. Number one, expect from Jesus. Expect from Jesus. Why is this point number one? If you want to go higher in your walk with God, you need to expect from Jesus. Because we are living in a time where we have put all of our expectations. You expected to be in school right now. You expected to be in a classroom right now. You expected that maybe you would have been further along, or maybe those of you who already graduated, you expected that you were going to have a normal graduation ceremony, but what happened? You didn't. What happened? You're not in school. What happened? Now you're learning from a computer. When we put our expectations in men or in humans, guess what? They're always going to fail. Why? Because they're human. But when we put our expectations in Jesus, he will fulfill every desire and he will fulfill every need. We cannot, when what, what happens when we have all these expectations of man, what happens is that they end up failing us. And then we end up getting discouraged. And then we end up blaming God, saying things like, God doesn't love me. God doesn't care about me. When truly the truth of the matter is, it's, it wasn't God's fault. What happened is we put our expectations in humans rather than putting our expectations in God. In Acts chapter 3, verse 5, the Bible says, So the man gave them his attention, expecting to get something from God, to, to get something from them. What happens when you put your expectations in Jesus? What you're saying is that every day when I wake up, I expect to hear from God. I expect a miracle to happen. I expect God to move on my behalf. So that is number one, expect from Jesus. Number two, the second letter is L, and that stands for leave the past behind. Leave the past behind behind. For some of you, that is the rhema word. That is the revelation that God wants to speak into your heart today. You need to leave the past behind. In Philippians chapter 3 verse 13, Paul says, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind, straining toward what is ahead. If we're going to move higher in Jesus, guys and girls, if we're going to elevate in our walk with the Lord, you got to learn to leave your past behind because where God is taking you, it has nothing to do with where you've been. Sometimes we are so focused on what happened behind us that we never get to experience what is ahead of us. You know, for those of you who drive a car or you know how to drive, there is that little mirror that is up front called the rear view mirror. What is the purpose of the rear view mirror? It is so that the person who is driving, they can look into that mirror before they switch lanes, or they could look into that mirror when they're backing up the car so that they don't hurt themselves by crashing into a car or so that they don't hurt others. Guess what, boys and girls? There is a rear view mirror in your life, and that is called your past. Now, the thing is, what happens if a driver was to just stare at the rear view mirror the whole time they're driving? What's going to happen is because they're looking at what's behind them and they're not focusing on the cars ahead of them, they're going to end up crashing. They're going to end up hurting themselves and hurting others around them. 
It is the same in our walk with Christ. If we decide that we want to move forward in Jesus, you cannot keep looking at your past behind you. But we need to understand that that is the way that the devil tries to discourage us. Young people, the way the devil is going to try to take you out of this fight, of this race, is he's going to try to say, well, do you remember what you did last week? Or do you remember what you did on the weekend? Or do you remember what you did last night? All of those things are already gone. They're already in the past. Therefore, don't even look behind. If you want to grow and you want to go higher and you want to elevate in your walk with God, you need to leave the past behind. The definition of the word elevate is to raise or lift something up to a higher position. When you elevate, that's why there's something called an elevator. The elevator, when you get into the elevator, when it's on ground level, the only place that you can go is up. If the elevator is on ground level, you can't go down anymore. Why? Because it's already down. So when you get into the elevator, normally you're going up. Now, in order to elevate in our walk with God, we need to leave the past behind. So number one, we said expect from Jesus. Number two, leave the past behind. Number three, enter his presence. The second E in the word elevate, enter his presence. Young people, this is the importance of reading your Bible daily and praying daily. You must get to a place where you are so in love with Jesus that you cannot wait to hear his word, that you cannot wait to hear his voice, that you cannot wait to talk to him. You know, just a couple of uh, hours ago, I was speaking with some of our young people, and this is what we were encouraging them with. We said, you need to get to a place where reading the word of God and, and journaling and praying, it becomes a habit. Why? Because if you want to go higher in your walk with God, you're going to need to spend time in his presence. It's great that you go to church. It's great that you are, are watching on quarantine youth night. It's great that you know a few scriptures here and there, but do you spend time in the presence of God? Let me tell you what, young people, you're never too young to spend time in God's presence. In fact, that is the best time to enter into his presence when you are at this young age. Number four, the letter V stands for value my relationship with Jesus. Value my relationship with Jesus. If you want to go higher Young people, you're going to need to value your relationship with Jesus. John chapter 14, verse 15, this is Jesus speaking. He says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. Why do we obey God? Why do we worship Jesus? Why do we read his word? Because we value our relationship with him. About seven years ago, when I got married to my husband, Philip, we exchanged our vows and every time we would say our vows, we would say two small words. Those two small words were, I do. Every time we said, I do, what we were saying was, I'm committed to you. I'm committed to this marriage. I am in this for life. I am going to run with you until the wheels fall off. Even after that, I am going to run with you to eternity. And so every day, my decision as a wife is based on the fact that I love my husband and I value my relationship with him. I will never do anything to compromise our marriage. I will never do anything that would allow me to step out of my covenant with my husband. Guess what, young people? It is the same thing in our walk with Jesus. If we value our relationship with Jesus, it should change the way that we walk, the way that we talk, the way that we think, the way that we obey our parents, the way that we treat our friends, the way that we honor our teachers on, on distance learning. When we value our relationship with Jesus, young people, it should change everything. And it is in that moment when you show that you value your relationship with Jesus, that you will begin to go higher like never before. Number, number five, um, in order to go higher, I must, the letter A stands for Allow God to transform me. Allow God to transform me. What you need to understand, young people, is that real transformation only comes from God. There is no way that you can be transformed from the inside out if you don't allow God to do it. You know, 
Um, there is a scripture in Romans chapter 12, verse two. I'm pretty sure some of you know this. It says, and be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. You cannot allow God to transform your life if you don't first renew your mind. Transformation comes from the word of God. Transformation comes from the spirit of God. Allow God to transform your life. Number six, in order to go higher or in order to elevate, I must, letter T stands for trust his timing. Trust his timing. In Ecclesiastes 3 verse 1, the Bible tells us there is a time for everything and a season for every activity under heaven. See, God never promised us that our life on earth is going to be easy. But young people, he did say that there is a time and a season for everything. If you are desiring to do a certain thing or you're desiring to, to play a certain sport or you're desiring to, to go higher in education or in success, whatever it is, can I encourage you? Trust God's timing. There is nothing that God will do in your life that is outside of his timing. Can I tell you, when you wait for God's timing, everything will fall into place. But when you try to go ahead of God's timing, you're going to mess up along the way. Things are going to come and things are going to pop up every now and then. And you're going to wonder, why is this happening? Or why is that not happening? Well, you need to ask yourself, have I been waiting for God's timing? Did I wait on God's perfect timing? And then lastly, number six, the letter E, the last letter E stands for engage with godly people. Engage with godly people. If you want to go higher, you need to engage with godly people. Who you hang around with, it matters. Your friendships matter. Your relationships matter. Uh, Psalms chapter one, verse one says, blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked or stand in the way that sinners take or sit in the company of mockers. You cannot go where God is taking you if you choose to keep company with those who are going in the opposite way. If you want to go further in your walk with Christ, young people, you're going to need to find other friends who are wanting to go further. If you want to go higher, if you want to know God more, you need to find young people who have that same desire. Because what's going to happen is if you want to go further, but you hang around people who want to stay the same, you're going to have to choose and you're going to have to decide, am I going to go this way or am I going to go that way? You need to choose. The Bible says to choose who you're going to serve because you cannot have two masters. And so these are the ways that you, these are the things that you need to do, young people, in order to elevate, in order to go higher. I'll go over it again. Number one, expect from Jesus. Number two, leave the past behind. Number three, enter his presence. Number four, value my relationship with Jesus. Number five, allow God to transform me. Number six, trust his timing. And then number seven, engage with godly people. If you want to elevate, if you want to go higher, these are the things that you're going to need to do. There is a cost to following Jesus. If you say that you are a Christian, you need to be a Christian. If you say that you love Jesus, young people, you need to love him and serve him with all of your heart. You cannot be the young person who says, oh, I'm just going to serve Jesus on Sunday. Then Monday through Saturday, I'm going to do my own thing. No, that's not the way that it goes. If you love Jesus, if you want to go higher, you need to do things that will allow you to go higher in him. So I pray that you were blessed. Thank you again to the leaders of, of Vista uh, Oceanside Assembly of God just for entrusting this platform to me. And I believe that young people, yes, we are living in an interesting time, but nothing is impossible with God. There is still a plan. There is still a purpose that has to be fulfilled. And I pray that you were encouraged tonight. So I love you, family. I hope that you were encouraged and I'll talk to you soon. God bless you. Thank you, Pastor CI, for that powerful word tonight.
We're going to go into our virtual games before we end out our series tonight. So I know a lot of you um, usually see the number there on your screen. If you see that number, hold it. Don't call and don't text. Please listen to the rules first. Mom, if you're watching, that means you too. Okay. All right, so here is our game for tonight. There's going to be three winners. You're going to send either a selfie with any kind of sports gear to that number. So any kind of sports gear. It can be football gear, baseball. It can be a cup. It can be a hat. It can be a shirt. So anything with your pretty self in that picture and sports gear. That's one way. And it didn't start yet, so if you send me something, it doesn't count. Okay? Second one, um, with the word tonight, she used the word elevate. There are three letter E's. E as in Edward. So if you send me at least two of those E's, what they, what they represented tonight, then you can win a prize. So as we sing this song, it's going to give you some time to get your either selfie or your E in. At the end of the song, then I'll announce who the winners are, okay? Ready, go, Bob. Thank you. 